Welcome to Cyclone Insiders. This is our second episode of the year. I'm your host, John Miller. I'm here today with Julia, Logan, and uh, Max. We're going to go over some uh, Cyclone sports in the past week, most notably football with an, a win over Texas Tech to improve to 3-0 in the Big 12 Conference and to the top of the division. So we're going to talk about that and go over more next on Cyclone Insiders. Welcome back to Cyclone Insiders. Iowa State football had a huge win, 31-15 to over Texas Tech at home. What are you guys' general thoughts on the game? You know, I thought it was a really solid effort from the Cyclones. It was uh, Brock Purdy's first 300-yard game this uh, season. We saw a little bit of the Brock we are uh, used to. But uh, both Brees Hall and Xavier Hutchinson especially have definitely proved themselves uh, the season. Um, Hutchinson had another solid performance, proving that he wasn't just a fluke in the Oklahoma game with nine receptions and 77 yards. But can we please talk about Texas Tech and their um, inability, inability to convert on third down? Both for 10. They would do this slant route every single drive and it wouldn't work. But no, it was, uh, I thought it was really solid effort by the, by the team. The, uh, the statistics de- definitely did not re- reflect the score. But it was a solid effort. It was a solid game. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I think it was a great Big 12 win. I mean, especially now when it's uh, we're in the non-conference or the conference-only games uh, of mm-hmm. the season, I think it's great that we win uh, every single game that we can. And just like you said, we've had Brock Purdy, 32 for 43, 300 passing yards and two passing touchdowns. Uh, I think we started out even better than when uh, against Oklahoma, uh, most notably was when their first drive, they had a long uh, passing uh, passing play. And then we just went into a field goal there. And with our defense in the Texas Tech game, they didn't get into the 100-yard mark uh, until well into the third, fourth quarter of the game. So overall, just a great uh, performance by the Cyclones. Yeah, I would have to agree. I feel like for the first time as like a Cyclone fan, I could like sit there and watch there quite comfortably because I feel like during the game, like it was like very intense and I was always on the edge of my seat. But I feel like this game, like I was much more at ease and I feel like we're not used to that as Cyclones. Like we're either trying to get into the game and still be in it or we're like right in it real close. I feel like that was nice for once to like just come out with the same intensity as we did from the Oklahoma game. Yeah, definitely. I, I I think you guys made all great points, especially, you know, the comfortability we had as fans. Um, and with that, what do you guys kind of think is the strongest part of our team, you know, after that game where it seemed like we kind of dominated in all facets? I think, honestly, I think our team's camaraderie is, like, really good this year compared to, like, last year. I just feel like we've been through a lot with, like, the pandemic. And then I also feel like, I feel like they're really highlighting like the Jack Trice story. I feel I feel like they're really using that as like a momentum and kind of like encouragement to like make Iowa State known not only for like their athletic ability and for our success as athletic program, but also just like for what Jack Trace really stands for. So I feel like there's a lot more like chemistry and connection just like going forth as a team that it's more than just a sport kind of thing. Yeah. No, I, I definitely uh, agree with you, Julia, on how the team has a lot more chemistry this season. I mean, if you look at last year, for example, it felt like as if we were much more uh, pass-heavy offense. Um, but I think the strongest part of the team this year, honestly, this this far, uh, is definitely the rushing offense. I mean, 11 rushing touchdowns compared to Brock Purdy's um, poor passing. Um, but now we, and we got a glimpse the past two games with around 250 yards against Oklahoma, and now this his first 300-yard game. Uh, the passing game is is improving, um, and uh, I, I feel like the defense has shown up this season, uh, especially the rush defense, uh, holding Texas Tech to only 58 yards, and then um, a few weeks ago against Oklahoma to around 100. 
I think it's great that you both brought up both the story of Jack Trice and also the offensive side, but I'd like to on the defensive side, uh, like I said last week, Oklahoma held them to a field goal after a great first drive by them, honestly. And then uh, personally, though, I'd like to see a little bit more out of Jaquan Bailey, who in the first game of the season, he had three and a half sacked. But just last week against uh, Texas Tech, he only had one tackle. But it's great to see uh, – Stand out a, a standout linebacker duo and uh, Jake Hummel and Mike Rose. Mike Rose with the interception in the TCU game kind of cemented the win. And then uh, Jake Hummel with uh, 30 total tackles so far this season. So they defense has really shown out in the past two weeks. Great back to back wins in the Big 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Jack Trice story has kind of put Iowa State, you know, at the forefront of a like the Black Lives Matter movement and everything like that, just being in the centerpiece of uh, college football in that sense. But, yeah, you talk about the offense. I mean, they've scored 30-plus points three weeks in a row. You know, what What do you guys think has changed since that Louisiana game where it seemed like we were kind of sputtering, especially in the second half? I'm, I'm going to say uh, momentum. Uh, fans into the stadium and improve play calling. It comes down to those three things, honestly. Yeah, I think the fans definitely play a big aspect. Like, I think that's with any, like, Cyclone sport, whether you're in Jack Trice or Hilton. Like, I feel like the fans are definitely encouragement. And I also feel like it was just, like, first game jitters. Like, we lost a lot of players from last season, and I think they just really didn't know what was going to work. And I think they finally figured that out. With, like, Brees Hall and Purdy, like, finally figuring out like what his role really means on the team. Yeah, those are both uh, great points there. And also just not taking our foot off the gas, you know, especially, I mean, it honestly kind of been pretty easy for us to lose that Texas tech game. If we didn't keep up the great offense and in the Oklahoma game, it was just a uh, great defense and great offense that kind of got those wins for us. Uh, not underestimating our opponents like with Louisiana and currently they're 21st in the AP poll. So, you know, they're not, it wasn't just a fluke, but just un- not underestimating and uh, learning from learning more from our losses than we do from our wins. Yeah. I like that you guys pointed out fans being in the stadium, you know, when we came into the year, it was kind of like, oh, there's not going to be any fans and it's going to eliminate that home field advantage. But then once we uh, got going and after the first game and they started allowing fans, it's really shown uh, how much Ames backs up their team, our team, I guess. Um, so, yeah, with that said, Iowa State 3-1, and 3-0 and in uh, Big 12 play. Is, that, is this the record you guys have expected at this point? You know, what were your expectations for the Cyclones coming into this year? You know, I think well, um, my expectations anyway, I think uh, right now I expected for us to be 4-0 um, because I didn't, really, I didn't really pay attention to uh, University of Louisiana. Um, and it turns out, I mean, they do have a solid team. They really, really do have a solid defense. Um, and as, as John stated, they're in the top 25 right now. Um, but, no, expectations coming in this year, I, I, I mean – I figured we would our offense would keep keep improving. I mean, we have a lot of we have the same, uh, I mean, same running back, same quarterback, and then Hutchinson um, has stepped up. Um, but no, I, my expectations this year, right? I thought I I expected the team to improve, and um, yeah. Uh, I would have to say uh, yes and no. Of course, we would all hope that uh, we would be four zero. But with us underestimating Louisiana, uh, I definitely thought that the Oklahoma and the Louisiana games would flip flop. Mm -hmm. Maybe. uh, I mean, I guess I some of us kind of overestimated how good uh, Spencer Rattler would be. But uh, I think three and one, not not terrible, but just I guess I would predict that we would be three and one at this point. Yeah, I agree with Logan. I feel like I definitely thought like before the Oklahoma game, I was like, Oh, I feel like we'll win. But then I also was like, let's be real. It's Oklahoma. Like, we're probably going to lose. That's really how the mindset I had. And I think, like, the Louisiana Louisiana game, like, we definitely should have had that game, and we overestimated it. And I really thought it would have been the other way around as well. Yeah, definitely. We'd love to be 4-0, but 
isn't it better this way? Because this way we're still three and zero in Big Twelve play, and that first game. I mean, although it is a um, you know bad spot on our resume, it still proves that we beat some great teams in Big Twelve play, and hopefully the Cyclones can keep it rolling. So yeah, earlier you guys mentioned Brees Hall as being a focal point of the offense, which he has been last week against uh, Texas Tech. He had twenty seven carries for one hundred forty four yards. With his stats so far, do you guys think he is a legit Heisman contender? He got one vote in ESPN's last October 12th ranking, so he's a, coming up on their radar, but you guys think he can, you know, emerge to that next level of being legit? You know, I, I really do. If we take a look look uh, at a little bit of history from the 2015 Heisman winner, Derrick Henry, um, he was, who was the last running back to win Heisman, for that matter, in the first pro, in the first four games, he had 422 yards and eight touchdowns. Brees Hall, he has 531 yards and eight t- touchdowns as well. Um, I mean, he's averaging 23 yards or 23 carries per game. And I think if he, as long as he's consistent, I mean, it's incredible at this point. He's still averaging uh, well over 130 yards a game. As long as he is consistent and stays healthy, no doubt in my mind does he have a shot. Yeah, I believe with that. I feel like Hall is definitely a contender if he keeps putting out the same numbers and the same rushing yards and touchdowns and even keeps, like, building on it. He definitely has a chance. I feel like a true Heisman winner just keeps, like, growing within their, like, ability and stats. I feel like if he keeps doing that, like, he could be more known. Oh. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with you guys on that. It's just – keeping consistent every Heisman winner has, I mean, had a consistent game every, uh, every time they played and they've won. And I just think if Brees Hall keeps that up, like you said, uh, over 500 rushing yards already and eight touchdowns, you know, uh, definitely going to have to see where it goes, but I personally am just glad that he's in uh, consideration for that award. Yeah, definitely. I think you guys all make great points, but the Heisman winner always, you know, they come out of nowhere and Hall kind of has that feeling to him. You know, you think Burrow and Manziel and some of those people that just kind of off the map and then their team, I, I, the Iowa State needs to have a lot of success in order for him to win. But if we just keep this rolling, he's definitely going to be uh, emerging even more heading forward. So with that said, Iowa State has a bye week this week. Do you guys think that's going to hurt the momentum that they've been uh, rolling towards with these three wins in a row in Big 12 play? You know, if we base it, if we base it off history, um, yeah. Um, but, no, I, I, I think as long as – I it, it could definitely uh, – it could potentially hurt the momentum. It, um, it, wouldn't be, it certainly wouldn't be a surprise. It, it would be nice if they could uh, continue it, but – it's yeah, I certainly would be no surprise if it the momentum. Yeah, I agree. I feel like having this week off, there could possibly be the chance of them losing momentum after the few first few wins. And I feel like what's bound to happen when they come off of it is they're gonna have probably a slow start. So hopefully they don't and they avoid that because I honestly think they could be a big twelve contender and I'd hate for them to like fall back on that. Yeah, I definitely think uh, it could hurt us. But obviously, you know, looking back earlier in the season, another uh, Big 12 rival uh, on the road, TCU, we beat them after a bye week. Now, Oklahoma State definitely will has a is better competition for us. But uh, I hope that they use that bye week, you know, more for practice, looking at film, getting better each each time they uh, step on that field. <laughs> Yeah, and Iowa State's got a huge game uh, next week after the bye week playing number seven, Oklahoma State, on the road. It's really, you know, this game could be for the Big 12 championship. You never know these early games in the season. Although, you know, you look at them, you're like, oh, we can bounce back later from that. They can uh, really be crucial in, far, as term, in terms of the standings later in the year. But, yeah, so with Iowa State on bye, there are a lot of other Big 12 teams on bye this week. But we will be doing pick them later in the show of the only Big 12 game uh, that is on the schedule this week. So uh, stay tuned for that, and we'll see you back after the break. 
back to Cyclone Insiders. We are now going to discuss some of the smaller sports here at Iowa State, volleyball and soccer. To start, the volleyball team lost in consecutive sets to number one Texas this week, and they and they face uh, number two Baylor this coming week. What do you guys think they have to do differently to maybe at least win one set or, you know, maybe the match? So. I think what Iowa State needs to do differently this time around is I think they really just need to find holes within Baylor Bears defense and just continue to work on their end as well on defense. I think that's really just what matters is on serve receive really using that to their advantage. And I also I think long rallies they're I think it's always good to have long rallies just because yeah, it's tough on our end as a cyclone, but it's awful. But it's also tough, also for the Bears. Just really proving your competition within the long rallies could have the Cyclones come out with a set. Yeah, I think they have to keep in mind that uh, you know Texas is a great team. There's no doubt about that, and uh, not letting that loss discourage them. And uh, just like you said, uh, getting into those rhythms. Uh, that they have against Texas Tech and Kansas State, and I think Iowa State can come out uh, winning a set, possibly two. Uh, you know, I mean, again, in the Texas uh, match, uh, Texas clearly had the high advantage, um, having nine blocks compared to Iowa State two. Um, as long as uh, Libero Izzy Anna keeps playing good, I, she had eighteen out of the forty-three digs the other game. Uh, so I, if she shows up. I think Iowa State definitely has a chance. It will, yeah. it, will a, it will be a tough matchup against a 5-1 Baylor team. but Yeah, I mean, and this part of the schedule for Iowa State is just brutal. What do you guys think, you know, having to play number one and number two back-to-back, what does that do to you as a team, and how do you not let that play into your future games and uh, bring down your record for the last, rest of the season? I think it's it can definitely be challenging and, like, without a doubt, like disheartening and it really mood ruins the mood and the confidence without a doubt. But I also feel like they have to stay positive in a way because I feel like tough schedules are always a good thing. It at least proves that you can stick with the big dogs and it can prove that, yeah, we might be facing number one, Texas, number two right now, Baylor, but down the road, they might face number five or number 10 or whatever, they'll know they can at least compete with them because they've been competing with Texas and Baylor. So I think just what they have to keep in mind is that, yeah, they're playing tough teams, but it's making them better in the long run. Going off what you said, Julia, um, you have to remember that it's a fairly young team and there's only three seniors. Um, and so I think this season can definitely be used as an, 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 an a, uh, advantage point as uh, far as uh, learning from, I mean, it, it's essentially learning. It's almost, it feels like it could be a rebuilding uh, year. Yeah, and uh, a tough schedule, you know, it can definitely bring uh, team morale down, uh, but uh, you got to try and make sure that that can affect your future games. Uh, and like what you said, Julia, it's more kind of about playing the team and not what they're ranked. Uh, obviously, that is a very scary sight to see at some points, but, uh, you know, if you, uh, disregard that and kind of just play their team and you know that it's big wins when you beat number two number five and uh you have to prepare uh, prepare for each team differently watch the film and prepare just like you would for uh any other game yeah the big 12 is definitely one of the toughest conferences in uh you know the country for volleyball Iowa State has done a great job under Christy Johnson Lynch of being able to get fourth place and be in the top half ever since I can remember, at least 10 years back. But through last week, Iowa State received 58 votes to be the highest team not ranked in the coaches poll because they only do 15 teams instead of 25. But and we're not bashing the ranking system, I guess. But anyways, 16th, they're ranked as the 16th team, which is higher than the football team, if you guys think about it. However, uh, volleyball and soccer and all the other sports, there will be no NCAA championships this year. So how would you kind of feel as an athlete if your team was that successful? But you don't even get the chance to compete for a championship. You know, don't you think that plays on your mentality to not do as well in contests or maybe not try as hard? I feel like, again, I feel like it hurts knowing that you won't be able to have a postseason. 
However, uh, you'll be able. It makes each and every game uh, that much more valuable. Every set, every point. I think they can. They're able to prove themselves uh, in the regular season. And again, definitely uh, for teams who are towards the top of the pack, they can use that as. I mean, every every game is essentially a playoff game. You could look at it in, in, in an optimistic viewpoint. Yeah, and uh, especially with such such a young team like you guys stated, I think that it's maybe the wins aren't as important considering there won't be a Big 12 championship or even a NCAA championship. In the work and seeing uh, the progress that you make from day one, I think that just ultimately uh, next year and will definitely motivate them uh, when they – you know, look at the schedule for next year and seeing their uh, road to the Big 12 championship and possibly an NCAA championship. Yeah, I definitely think they should just be at least grateful that they're getting the chance to play because honestly, I think coming into the school year, we all thought like, is there even going to be any sports? So I think they're just lucky enough to get the chance to play even at the college level. Yeah, and it, it sucks, especially for the seniors, knowing that you won't be able to play in the postseason. But like Max said, Iowa State only has three, so they're going to have you know a great uh, portion of their roster, starting roster coming back next year. But as we pointed out, I mean, COVID's it's it's a changing situation all the time, and you never know next week or two weeks on the line when they'll announce that they change something. So um, you always just got to be able to play to the fullest of your ability. And I think Iowa State, especially with their coaching staff. Um, they've been doing a great job of that and hopefully we'll heading forward too. But uh, with that said, we'll head to break. And when we get back, we'll talk about Iowa State soccer. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Cyclone Insiders. The Iowa State Cyclone soccer team defeated Oklahoma 1-0 last week to improve to 2-3 to on the year. They face 2-3 Texas this week. Who do you guys think is going to come on top, out on top? Do you think the Cyclones are going to improve to 500 or... Go below. You know, you know, John, that's probably the hardest question I've been asked all week. Uh, Texas had a great game, uh, topping K State seven seven to, ten, to seven to nothing. Uh, ISU, but needs to work on their defense. Uh, their opponents have seventy eight shots compared to Iowa State's forty four. Uh, Texas has sixty seven shots on the season, and it has a forty six percent shots on goal percentage. Uh, but both teams have given up six goals this year, so it'll be interesting to see. I think it will be a very even matchup. However, I, I think Texas might have the slight edge. Uh, I I think we all would, but I'd like to see ISU win this. Some uh, similarities that they do have, both have lost to West Virginia and both the Oklahoma 1-0, to but the Iowa State defense will definitely have to come in handy, uh, especially when you see that. Texas beat Kansas State last Friday, 7-0. to zero. Uh, Kind of a ser- scary stat there. But ultimately, I think it'll be a great game to watch. I could see it going either way. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I mean, honestly, I think Iowa State will come out on top just because they're coming off of momentum with the game-winning goal by Mira Emma and, like, just the terrific defense by Jordan Sokowitz at the goal. I mean, I think that will really just boost their confidence on going forward. I think Mira Emma is one of their top players along with Jordan. And I just think when you game, when you win games that tight, I think your confidence is just on a high. And I, I think that will transfer into Texas. Yeah, I think Fannin's really done a great job this year of kind of remolding their mindset and stuff like that, just in the conversations I've had with him he's always about um you know controlling what you can and not necessarily worrying about the opponent all the time so with that said i think um heading down the stretch here they're gonna try to hone uh more of what they've done bad and uh not focus so much on what they've done well but with that said this could be a uh, defining game for the team you know in terms of the season and trying to finish above 500 do you guys think the cyclones have gotten improved that much or do you guys think the conference has just fallen off as a whole? Obviously, this is Fannin's first year, so um, him coming in, it makes it look like the team is just improved. But, you know, there could it could be of a variety of factors at play. And so what do you guys think? I don't really think the conference has fallen off. I mean, I was looking at, like, past years. West Virginia has always been top three. So I honestly think, like, 
along with like TCU and Oklahoma State, like they've been up there within the conference. So I don't really think it's the conference falling down. I just think, I mean, yes, there's a new coach and usually new coaches, it's a rebuilding year, but I think this new coach is obviously doing something different and it's working for him. I definitely agree with you, Julie. I think Pannon, um, with all his success at Bowling Green, I think he's able to translate that over. And of course, your first season, it's, gonna, it's hard to have uh, it, it is a record compared to how he did at Bowling Green. Um, I mean, different conference, bigger school. Uh, but overall, I, I think, uh, no, I would say, I think in years to come, they will, you'll see vast improvement. Yeah, and you, I feel like you can see some of that improvement this year. And uh, with the conference, I think it hasn't really fallen off. You know, you see this with every sport in the, in the Big 12 soccer. You know, you have your dominating teams like uh, your West Virginia and your TCU, and then your sort of lackluster teams in uh, uh, Kansas State. But I think that you, see, you can see a lot of improvement this year, and then hopefully you see a lot more of that next year and the fall years to come. Yeah, I would say it's definitely been one of those cellar dwellers in the past uh, couple of years. I mean, last year they didn't even win a game in conference, and they only scored a couple goals, I believe. So, Fannin, it, although in the games they've had this year, their defense has been more impressive than their offense for the most part, but um, you just hope Iowa State can hold on to them because, you know, building on the success in the first year could be crucial and lead to even uh, higher standings heading forward. But as Julia said, uh, Jordan Silkowitz had a great uh, performance this week at goalkeeper. She was the Big 12 goalkeeper of the week for the second time in three weeks. How big of a part does uh, she play in the Cyclone success? Or maybe a better question would be, how valuable is a goalkeeper to the defense? I think she's very valuable to Iowa State success. With her 25 saves, she's leading the Big 12, and I think that's absolutely incredible. And even on her resume, being the uh, Big 12 goalkeeper of the week. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you, Max. I think the defense probably does lean on her, and I think that happens in any sport. You always lean on the star player. But I just think she's definitely earned her spot, and I think she's going to prove that she's going to continue to do damage the rest of the season. And I think even the team – I think in a way she kind of inspires the rest of the team because she's obviously carrying the team on her back and she has their back. And I think the teammates reciprocate that with having her on their back as well. Yeah. And uh, congrats to her. Uh, she does play a very big role in the defense. And I think she'll be very important in this next game against Texas, like I said, who scored seven goals against Kansas State. And uh, it's just great that we're able to have her on the team and be able to lean on her at points when the offense and the defense are somewhat lackluster on Iowa State's part. Um, a lot of their games against the harder teams early in the season, they didn't, uh, you know, possess the ball for very long. So the other team had the ball on Iowa State's part of the field for much of the game. And that puts a lot of pressure on the defense and uh, Jordan just to hold that up. So, yeah, her leading the league in saves could be seen as a good thing for her success, but at the same time, it can uh, show that Iowa State's offense has been struggling a little bit and they need to do a better job of holding on to the ball longer and just putting more shots on goal because obviously the goal of soccer is to put the ball into the net, but at the same time, there's so many little things with controlling the pace and uh, possession time and stuff like that that just add into it and so hopefully Iowa State can uh, pull out a win this week and uh, kind of show they're one of those top teams in the Big 12, or at least the upper half. But uh, with that, we're going to head to break. And when we come back, we'll be deciding the only game of the week in uh, the Big 12 Pick'em segment. So stay tuned. Welcome back to our to Cyclone Insiders. Now we will do the part of the show where everybody's been waiting for the big 12 pick them. Uh, we have an even lighter week than last week. We only have one game. It is between Kansas and West Virginia. The Mountaineers are favored by 22 and a half points. It is in, I don't even know Morgantown. Yeah. Morgantown. It is in Morgantown. Um, yeah. Mountaineers favored by 22 and a half. What do you guys think? You know, that song, uh, country roads, take me home. Yeah. All time great, West Virginia. Uh, I'm gonna take West Virginia in this one. Uh, just to compare some stats here, I think defensively Kansas 
can't compete. I mean, Kansas has three sacks compared to West Virginia's 11. Kansas has zero interceptions compared to West Virginia's four and two of those against Baylor. And West Virginia's quarterback only has two interceptions and both also came from Baylor. I think that Kansas won't be able to stop the West Virginia offense. Not the best in the Big 12, but definitely one that you don't want to go up against. Uh, they will win by 22 and a half or possibly even more because as we saw against Oklahoma state, once it was 31 to zero at half, Kansas just was unable to come back and compete for, uh, the win there. So I think definitely what I'll take West Virginia as well. Yeah, I think I'm with Max and Logan. Kansas is no bueno. They're not good. So I'm just going to go with West Virginia. (laughs) Uh, yeah. So. West Virginia lost to Coastal Carolina by 15 points to open the year. And um, although I think Coastal Carolina is decent, but um, I'm going to take the Mountaineers as well. Kansas is just look absolutely terrible. They lost by 40 points the last two weeks to Baylor and Oklahoma State. So, yeah, the Mountaineers, uh, although I don't think they're necessarily a top tier team, they'll probably uh, be able to be pretty competitive and, I see them blowing out Kansas here. So, mm. and well, I think a lot has to do with uh, the coaching change because Holgerson left for Houston last year. Mm-hmm. Although they didn't do that good, did they? Houston didn't. But, mm. but yeah, that's gonna wrap up our show, uh, episode two here for Cyclone Insiders. Um, we'll come back next week ready to talk about some more cyclone athletics although there will be no football i'm sure there'll be some more emerging stories in terms of rankings and uh just other game plan things that iowa state has um to focus on so we'll see you guys next week thank you